So, I thought I would talk about uh, abortion and, or maybe better to talk at, say, uh, right to life and uh, pro-choice, you know, to, to look at both of those. So, I hold both poles, okay? I'm anti-abortion and I'm pro-choice. And it's not contradictory, okay? Why am I anti-abortion? Because uh, I think, you know, that that birth does begin at conception, although we're not quite sure exactly when conception occurs. Um, you know, is it when the, uh, you know, when the fertilized egg attached to the womb? Is it when the sperm enters the egg? of what happens in terms of in vitro fertilization. So there's still many questions about when life ac actually begins, when the mind enters into the fertilized egg. <clears throat> so uh, that's one reason I'm anti-abortion. Also because my little sister is adopted and I always wanted a little sister and she was the product of a very um, difficult situation, um, but she became part of our fa family and uh, when she was two days old, and so I really love her and I'm glad she's there. On the other hand, I am also pro-choice. Why? because I don't think the government has any business at all uh, interfering with our private and personal lives. And a, an unwanted pregnancy is a difficult situation. And it's not just for the woman. It's for the man, it's for the baby, it's for the families. It is difficult, yeah? And the way to solve the difficulty um, whether it's emotional or financial or who knows what, is not by uh, government law, okay? It's by compassion. And so to have compassion for the mother, for the father, for the child, for the families, for everybody involved, and with a kind and compassionate heart, that leaves open space for the mother and maybe the fathers and the family, whoever else is involved, um, to think about how to deal with the, the situation. Yeah? But when you have the government interfering in your bedroom, um, you can't, you, you know, you're boxed in. And you know, you, your body is under government control in that way and open to prosecution. And that is, that kind of attitude is very, very harmful. Yeah, so I think these things have to be approached with a lot of compassion. Also, um, one thing that really disturbs me in this argument is that people want to save the lives of the unborn children. But after the kids are born, they don't want to give the mothers food stamps. They don't want to necessarily give the kids a good education in a good school. They don't want to give the kids health care. They want to cut the budgets, the, the government budgets for these kind of social services. And, and that's just cruel in my mind. Yeah. So I, I hold both stands in, in this big complicated mess, pro-choice and also anti-abortion. How does that work uh, in terms of when people come to me for advice about what to do? Well, one woman some years back uh, asked, she had an unwanted pregnancy. I 
told her about my little sister, and uh, you know, and she was a Buddhist. She, she had that kind of background of of birth starting with conception, and she decided to have the baby, and she has uh, a very beautiful da- daughter. Um, another woman called me after that and wanted some counseling, and I told her the same thing. And uh, she was she got mad at me, yeah, because uh, she knew what she wanted to do, and she wanted me to reaffirm it by saying that. But uh, it, uh, I didn't pick up on that, and I wouldn't have done that anyway. And then another woman called, and. She told me she had the abortion recently. I didn't even know she was pregnant, but she knew what I would say, and she knew what she wanted to do, and so she did it and then informed me afterwards. Okay. Uh, So, yeah, I really think it, it needs to be a situation in which there is space and kindness and support all the way around for everybody. As for um, Roe v. Wade and what happened with the uh, Supreme Court, I read one uh, sign online that said, I would have more rights if I were a gun. (laughs) Yeah, and that's really sad because it's true, because the uh, Supreme Court, right before they they overturned Roe v. Wade, they uh, they overturned a New York state law that prohibited people from carrying guns outside their home unless they had a reason, and you know they had to apply for a license for that. Okay, and you know, such as uh, reasons such as their own self defense or they were getting stalked or something like that. And uh, the Supreme Court overturned that so people can carry their guns almost anywhere except into a courtroom, except into legislative buildings. So the people who make the laws and the people who um, enforce them don't want uh, open carry in their environments. But the rest of us who don't want open carry, yeah, we don't uh, get to choose. Well, on your private property you can. So for example, nobody can bring weapons here uh, to the Abbey. Okay, so again, you know, I have my opinions about the court. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm like many people who have lost faith in the court because I think that it's been politicized and because of the way the system is set up. I think we need more than the difference of one vote to make decisions that affect millions and millions of people. And so many decisions, well, they used to be uh, 5-4. Now they've become more uh, 6-3. Yeah. So I think just the structure of the court needs to be performed, uh, reformed uh, and also make it so that every president gets to a, por- a point um, justices, yeah? So that may mean the justices not being there for life, but, you know, um, being there with with a certain term, which I think uh, would be good for the country because you get more uh, people from each generation being on the court. So it becomes more representative of the U.S. population. Yeah, I know a lot of people are angry about Roe v. Wade. Um, You know, how to deal with the anger. I've been 
I just got done teaching chapter six of Shanti Deva's text. Yeah, and uh, that's the long version of how to deal with anger. But there's many short talks I've given on dealing with anger. And there's also the book Working with Anger and His Holiness, the Dalai Lama's book Healing Anger. So there's lots of resources out there um, to read, to deal with anger. Yeah, so the anger is one thing. Then what to do, yeah, then we have to uh, really do something about voting and get people out to vote so that the people we elect uh, show the view that, that we want. And uh, to get people out to vote, we need to reform the, uh, we need to, yeah, the voting rights Act, which the present same, uh, Supreme Court also took out key pro, uh, provisions, and the previous one did too. Yeah, so we need to to really get behind uh, voting rights, and uh, you know, make sure that uh, people's voices are heard and everybody's voices are heard. Um, protests bring attention. To, to the issue, so they serve that um, function. But protests don't change the laws. Yeah, so we have to really focus on, on voting. Yeah, at the state level and federal level, both. Yeah, uh, fortunately we live in a, um, a much more open state, but still, Voting rights are, are very precious, and we have to make sure that everybody has them. Okay.